Good afternoon. I welcome you once again to watch the program Binding. Today is quite special as we host an author of espionage and political novels. This niche is quite vacant in Ukraine and he is the only one who represents it. Please meet our Ukrainian John Likar, the author Serhii Postolovsky. He knows how to write in such a manner to connect it to the Ukrainian context. Today we will discuss Ukrainian politics, Ukrainian spies, Ukrainian espionage and political novels. Sir He, tell me honestly, did you imagine yourself as a writer in adolescence? Many writers from childhood published their stories in children's magazines and newspapers, or they wrote some fairy tales, or a young person writes highly graded essays. Gradually, they progress by writing more mature materials and become writers. While someone plays football or is a hooligan, and then they suddenly discover that they can become potential authors of books only by the age of 30. How did this process go with you? Well, probably I experienced the first case. I didn't want to do anything but write since I was 14 years old. Sure. Yes, I wrote only for myself. The first novel was published only when I turned 28. Well, don't be so harsh on yourself. Some only publish their first book when they are 60 years old. I grew up in the atmosphere of literature. Of course, I should credit my father for that, as he taught me to love books. The more I read, the more I wanted to create my own images, worlds and heroes. Be that as it may, I will not read just any book. For instance, I'm not a big fan of fantasy or science fiction novels. You're not? Not a bit. It's strange. I never liked and read it. I am more into detective novels, if to speak about fiction. They were closer to novels about espionage and politics. Those could be historical novels in social or psychological literature. Do you mean something more down-to-earth than fantasy? Yes, definitely. Well, did you not think about writing some romantic novels about love? No, because this is a totally different genre, though it had some elements of love and romantics. I see. I refer to authors like Fitzgerald Hemingway. I see. So you started to write as you said for yourself and your works were not published. No, no means not publishing it. However, have you showed it to your relatives? No, I haven't. Have you not shown your work to a single person? Yes, well, I wrote, but it was more of like sketches or unfinished stories and tales. More of sketches or etudes. Yes, sketches. I guess I tried to write myself out in this way. Maybe you made your first steps. Yes, I guess I did that, so I could sit and create a full-fledged piece of work. Listen, I don't know. Often authors, or at least emerging authors, pester their families, wives and parents to catch their attention. They read out loud pieces from their works, whole paragraphs, and then ask for their opinion. So how would you evaluate it? Do you like the style? What about this moment? You said you didn't tell anyone that you're writing. I mean, did you sit in a room, close the doors and write your novel? Yes, which was eventually published. Ultimately, you brought it to a publishing house. Someone read the material and said, we should publish this brilliant piece of work. Yes, I brought it to a publishing house and it was released. So tell me more about it. It was your first novel, after all. The first novel was written in the Russian language. I titled it Native's Diamond. It was in 2011. I wrote about the years 2009 to 2010. I described the corruption scheme with Amber. Such a topic was unpopular at the time. Yet you addressed it then. Yes, the classic situation when the governor of the so-called N region is caught for conducting major offshore deals with Amber. It was also revealed that he sold diamond pipes. I see everything is quite complicated. Yes, indeed. It is more complicated than the way in which the mass media presented. Yes, but of course he deceives foreign investors and they put him on the wanted list. The plot revolves around this search. Does the novel have a character that destroys everything all around? This often happens. Yes, it has such a hero, but he does not destroy anything. I mean, he tries more of resolve the matter and reveal the underhanded schemes. Yes, you know, the heroes like James Bond are far from my favorite. I don't like such heroes. I'm referring to the plot line of a happy ending and such superheroes. Are you more realistic? Yes, for sure, because political and spy detective novels are associated mainly with British writers. Eric Ambler, John Le Carr and Graham Greene.
британцы, три британца Эрик Кэмблер, Джон Ле Каре и Грэм Грин. Oh, I see. You see, those are people who are realistic and dig into complicated situations. Everything is more prosaic than in the works of Ian Fleming. I understand. So there are no tight-laced gentlemen and some astonishingly beautiful women who emerge from the foam of the sea. Everything is familiar to us. It is Ukrainian. Yes, you should pay attention to the details. You know, the problem of heroes visibly exists in modern Ukrainian literature. Why? It is due to the fact that we are at the crossroads. We have the heroes of past, while the heroes of the future are yet to be invented. The modern hero in literature is still ambiguous, especially when it is a spy or a member of the security service of Ukraine, you know? Therefore, it is interesting to learn how our guest estimates his heroes. Look, Serhii, it is easy to recognize Ukraine in your novels. All these schemes, corruption and political intrigues. Everything is familiar for us, because we face it every day. However, there are some questions to the hero. What kind of a character should be a modern hero that will be in your novel, in your opinion? So to speak, he must be not a common man, who comes and resolves every problem, but at the same time should not be a James Bond type, who drinks martini, shaken, not stirred and so on. Where did you find your hero, and how did he emerge? You know, I set a goal to create a positive image of the security service of Ukraine member that is absent before coming up with the idea of a hero, because it is always a corrupted person who has a fly car registered to his mother and a large house registered in the name of his wife. Overall, it is a problem that exists in a system. Имеет крутую машину, записанную на маму, да, большой дом, записанную на жену, все. Quite a typical character. But at the same time, we cannot say that 100% of the secret agents are like that. The war has been ongoing for five years, and it proves that many people are cynical, and there is corrupted scum. Sure, with a car, a house, and a summer cottage. Да, потому что все-таки есть ребята и мужчины, которые Yes, but there are guys and men who work for their country and national interests because they are conscious. I set a goal to imagine and create a hero who will, so to speak, I am not completely sure because life is chaotic, but he will form an adequate society when youth and children will grow up and will need new heroes, since the heroes that exist right now are close to us. Sure, the heroes from period of Zaporizhia and Sich, they also have a positive attitude and influence. Yes, but it was long ago, yet heroes of the UPA are also positive. Yes, sure, but if we do not write about those who live today, after all, we live in a volatile historic period, that one way or another will become history. Of course, we should not forget about it. I gradually started to develop such a hero. I wrote a novel that is titled in Ukrainian The Last case of Ivan Princip in 2012. So this character Ivan Princip is my hero. He is an intel officer. I describe the future in the novel, in the year of 2040. I see. In the novel there is a Crimean Peninsula Republic, an East Donbass prefecture, and I wrote it long before the events on the Maidan in Kiev. Mm -hmm. Some unknown force appears and starts to tear Ukraine apart in different regions. So the hero Ivan Princip comes to resolve the matter. He is retired at that moment. The last novel that I published is titled The Enemy of the Wrath of God. It tells about the youth of a hero and the links between events that are happening today. Do you mean the Maidan? No, not exactly the Maidan, but the events afterwards, namely the war. He is involved in the anti-terrorist operation in 2016, and he receives the news that one of his four friends is killed. He was killed in a gruesome manner. Приходит новость, что убили ихнего друга. Их четыре друга одного убили. Да, и убили очень жестоко, отрезали голову. He was beheaded, and his head was sent to his wife. Ivan Princip and his friends decide to take revenge by creating a liquidation team and start the hunt. Listen, it is a spoiler, because then we will retell the whole novel. Okay, should I tell more about the hero? Yes, about the hero. So you tell us. 
с очень трудным характером, неуживчивый. Человек, который никогда, как говорят, не станет генералом, потому что... He's a person with a tough personality and is difficult to understand. He's a man about whom often people say that he will never become a general, because due to his peculiar traits, he will never be silent and will never force a smile, as well as going and doing something that is extraneous for him. Ну, вот это уже, да. это уже настоящий герой. Да, да, то есть... Yes, he's suffering because he could not achieve a respectable career and gain a financial status, but he would never try. He's always punished by fate for this. ...статусные там выгоды, да, но он на это никогда не пойдет. И за это всегда его судьба бьет. Listen, I have a question. You developed him as a character, and he matured and became a retiree in one of your novels. Then you returned to his youth, and it is a present-time plot, and so on. What will be next? Perhaps you will write at least a dozen novels, as far as I understand. Your hero, you know, he's such a Miss Marple, who lived in the works of Agatha Christie. However, if you made him a retiree in 2040, maybe he's 60 years old and will be preserved in such a state or will you create a new character? You have written about his senior years, his youth and past. So what exactly do you plan to do next? I will tell even more. He remains and I am currently finishing a new novel that is called Dictator, about Ukraine that is basically under the rule of a dictator. Sure. He is a peculiar dictator, not in the classic sense of Stalin or Hitler, but perhaps is more similar to the one who was in South Korea, Park Joon-hee. He managed to create a South Korean miracle. In fact, he proposes the motto that dictatorship is for rulers and order is for the people or something like that. Yes, these are quite popular mottos. So the new Ivan Princip appears in the dictator's party. They save him from ending up in jail because in the end of... Please don't spoil the plot. Ukraine has become divided in terms of attitude to such cases. The vast majority of citizens who did not openly support the actions of the unknown was covertly satisfied, because God sees everything and punishes those who stole from poor Ukrainians over decades. You know, I will tell you that it is interesting how authors see the future when they write about it. Moreover, Postolovsky is a political expert, and he knows something about issues in which most people are not experienced. So we were interested to ask him more about well, I believe that there are two potential scenarios. I think that the situation must be resolved within five years to become more stable. It can continue for a long time, though it cannot exist forever. The first scenario depends, of course, on both, on the results of presidential and parliamentary elections, as well as on the positions of Russia, the US and the EU. How they will cooperate with the new Ukrainian leadership and what steps the authorities will take. If the political and economic trends that we have observed over the last five years continue, the whole tendency, we will not close the gap. And precisely this will be beneficial for Russia. I would argue that one can hardly imagine a more beneficial situation than the stagnated conflict and a controlled chaos in Ukraine. A godsend for them. Well, the situation is ambiguous because they can say, we told you that there are no reforms, everything is bad, and sanctions, and we will work with you. Of course, you say that the future depends on the presidential and parliamentary elections, and so on. Sure thing. However, the elections are dependent on the choice of the people. What do you think people will choose? I'm not asking to name specific surnames or candidates, as the program is not about this. On the contrary, I mean the development and paradigm in which Ukraine is moving. What do you think about how your readers think? Are they biased and how do they see the future of Ukraine? You see, there is a moment when people get tired of the old regime and system and are ready to vote for any new and fresh face, ideas in the system. I mean, people want to see real functional changes, not those that are declared. 
действительных перемен, а не декларативных. Yes, yes, I see. But I am not more confused by the notion of any new face in politics. So please tell us about your future novel that will be published soon. I think that I will finish it in about a month or a month and a half. And then you can publish it, right? Yes. So can you give me a spoiler? What will be the title? Dictator. I think this is quite a catchy title for a Ukrainian novel. Let's do it that way. It will be published. We will read it and we will invite you to visit us once again. Maybe in a year or two to discuss whether your prediction was right or maybe time will tell and correct it. Please promise me that when you return to our program binding with your new novel that we will discuss its success among readers. Is it a done deal? Absolutely.